Durag Wisdom here ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Y2K 21.03.03 The music you're going to be hearing in the background once again is random, various I have about 17,000 tracks on my iPod so I have a chance to give you a little radio program with different various musical cues in the background and by the way the one you're hearing now is Rudy by Jerry Goldsmith Franz Kafka wrote a terrifying nightmare of a novel called The Trial. In the original German, the title is, reads or translated as Dare the Process. Process. The Process. If you've ever read this novel, it deals with a person named Joseph K., who has been accused of a crime that throughout the entire novel he has tried to find out what it is. He can't seem to find out what he is being charged with because all these roadblocks are continuously being put up in his way. No matter what he does to find out the nature of his crime, it becomes more and more difficult with the closer Mr. K gets to his so-called trial. The only thing that he does know about his crime, whatever it is, it is serious enough that he could be put to death if he is found guilty. Kafka despised the dehumanizing processes bureaucracies force people to go through in their quest to get the help that they need. He saw the red tape and everything with it as a way that those stay in power. Where they are because the rest of us are lost in their bureaucratic processes. The final goal of all of this is simply to make sure that real problems in our society and our world are not ever solved. I am extremely happy that Trader Trump is out of office for now. I say for now because the threat of him still looms large. I hope that Trump either ends up in jail or dies before he can assume the office of President of the United States ever again. But there will now, thanks to him, be others more subtle and more sophisticated and more intelligent than Trump will ever be. And these future monsters will be in an even better position to assume power and carry out those policies ending our experiment in democracy forever. Enough people in this country supported that bastard Trump, uh, 74 million or so. And if we don't, on our side, we slack off and not vote, we could have another dictatorship here in the last, the end of our country. But then again, it is wonderful that we have more than 81 million voters who put Joseph R. Biden into power. And from here on, I'm going to be referring to him as J.R.B. The initials J.R.B. Joseph R. Biden in power. I have one question. Will J.R.B. be able to solve most of the important issues facing our country during these tragic and dangerous times? If you've read Kafka, and most especially the trial, this may be a near to impossible task for him or for anyone. The rules of our Congress will make most of what the new president wants to accomplish a daunting, Kafka-esque, absurd task. The filibuster is the first rule that should be abolished outright. It simply ensures that the minority has more power than the majority and that nothing will ultimately get done. JRB is attempting to pass a massive package of pandemic aid which was to include a $15 an hour minimum wage. In a responsible world, a world where life truly mattered, this would be accomplished. But in the world of congressional rules and politics, only tax breaks and social welfare for the rich matters. That gets done really quickly. If J.R.B. wanted to get his policies passed, he would need 60 votes by present-day filibuster rules. Not a simple majority as what would be expected in any logical world. 
This is the reason Congressional Democrats are going to pass their pandemic aid bill using reconciliation instead of using the usual route. The former will allow them to pass their bill with a simple majority. As every bill should be passed if it wasn't for the Kafka-esque and totalitarian filibuster. When I imagine the original filibuster rules, folks, I think of Jimmy Stewart as Senator Smith in the classic Frank Capra political satire, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Spoiler alert, in the climactic sequence, Senator Smith uses the filibuster to defend his stance against a bill supported by corrupt members of the Senate. In order to do this, Smith must hold the floor in filibuster without hat leaving, not yielding. The longer he can hold the floor and speak, the stronger he can make his case and thus delay passage of the disputed bill. Once Smith yields the floor, however, he can't get it back and thus can't delay a bill going forward. If only fictional Senator Smith could have taken full advantage of the present day bull duty and Kafka-esque style of filibustering. The new rules of the filibuster require no physical stress in any way. No talking to you can't anymore and thus faint in exhaustion. No. Today's filibuster is a simple matter of minority rule. If Mitch McDumbell, now minority leader, doesn't like a bill, he simply demands a filibuster in which no one must talk. No one must talk until they drop, as in the old days. Now the filibuster is a simple matter that requires no blood on the floor. All it requires now, a 60 vote majority for something to pass. Not a simple majority to get things done. The result, instead of Democrats being able to directly vote for a bill in the usual way, they have to take a circuitous route to get around the 60 vote limit so that through reconciliation, they can pass this vital bill with a simple majority. Folks, we gotta study civics. You gotta know what's going on in the government. Because if you don't, you're gonna get screwed. Democrats have a razor thin majority in the Senate. And that is shaky too because of oxymoronic Democrats, in quotes, like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. Conservative Democrats. They are against the elimination of the filibuster, as we know it today. Manchin, for one, is standing against JRB's pick for the head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which they had to drop because of her alleged nasty tweets about certain lawmakers. What a hypocrisy. Trump could nasty tweet anyone he wanted. And Manchin protected and voted for all his nominees. JRB knows, President Biden, that he must get things started and done right now because the mechanisms of our government run on Kafka time, Orwellian time, not on productive time. JRB and the Democratic controlled Congress are taking full advantage of reconciliation for the COVID-19 relief bill and later for the infrastructure bill. After that, who even knows how much will get done? The stupid rules of the Senate will ironically allow nothing to get done in the remaining years of this new presidency. I hope I'm wrong. Know this, we have only one party trying to govern now. One, the flawed Democratic Party. The other party in our constitutional democratic republic, the Republican Party, has been eaten alive by violent fascist totalitarianism. Again, close to or more than 73 million registered voters in our country support totalitarianism and violent racist extremism. 
That is a fact. And it's a sad fact. The purpose of bureaucracy is to wear us down and grind us up through drowning us in useless process and paperwork until we give up. We must never give up. We must remain civically engaged. And we must demand the end to congressional rules that stand in the way of our truly getting things done during this vital JRB era.